everything you're looking at is made using the new XR Interaction Toolkin 2.3 but most of all, it's available for everyone to try and learn from. That's right, this is Unity XR new example project. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it and give a detailed overview of what's inside. And you will see, this is kind of amazing. But before getting started, make sure to subscribe down below. And as always, a big shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work. And if like them, you want to get access to exclusive content, Join us, link in the description. Okay, so to get started, we simply need to head over to the XR Interaction Toolkit example GitHub page. You will find this link in the description below. And now, if I click on code on the top right corner, we can download it using GitHub Desktop, of course. But in my case, I will simply download this project as a zip file. Once it is downloaded and that you've unzipped the project, we can open the Unity Hub. Then let's click on Open. And now let's simply navigate to where we downloaded this project until you see its asset folder. Perfect. Now let's click on Open. Okay, so by default, the project will try to open using the version it was made with, which is Unity 2020. But any version above will work. So in my case, I will select the one I have on this computer, which is 2021.3. Now let's continue and we can simply say yes to everything Unity might ask us and just wait a little bit. Okay, so here we are now, you should be inside the demo project. Hopefully you don't have any error showing at this point and we are ready to explore the demo scene. For this, let's head over to XRI example scene and as you can see, we have seven different stations, the locomotion setup, the Grab Interactable, the Activate Interactable, the Socket Interactor, 3D UI, and Physics Interactable. Now, we could explore them one by one, but as you can see, there is a last scene called XRI Example Main, and if we double-click on it, as you can see, we now have this gorgeous scene that gathers all of the seven stations in one place. And by the way, we can already see some interesting things to learn from with the environment use. We have a great water shader, for example, and if I scroll down a little bit, we actually don't have a detailed skybox, but instead some 3D model of mountain all around that we can better see by clicking on here the toggle effect and fog. Anyway, we can see also that they use a nice looking sphere with a cloud sphere material to give the illusion of clouds. But anyway, enough with the environment. Now let's double click on the complete XR origin setup to resume in our scene. And now let's finally click on play to try this demo. Okay, so I'm in VR by now. As you can see, this demo scene is using the basic XR origin prefab that we already know. It has the default controller, so no animated hand, but the important part is not the player itself, it's the interactable that we will see in this scene. First of all, we have on this station where we can tweak the locomotion system, so let's have a look at it. By default, if I move the left thumbstick on my left controller, we have continuous movement. Now, if I do the same on the right controller, we have snap turn when I move the thumbstick left or right, or teleportation when I move it forward. Now, this is pretty simple. It used the same system that we already made in my tutorial series on how to make a VR game. Some nice things shown here, for example, with the teleportation, is that you can set the direction of the player using the little thumbstick, or we have also some teleportation anchor to fix the direction we want to be teleported, like here in front of the station. Anyway, now let's go back in front of the panel. So, as you can see, we can say for each end if you want to use continuous movement or combine turn and teleportation. If you use continuous movement, you can say if it will move in the direction of the head or the direction of the controller. Now, if you use teleportation combined with turn, you can say if you want to use continuous turn or snap turn. Now, in my case, I will leave everything by default, which is continuous on the left and teleportation with snap turn on the right. But now, as you can see, we have also a vignette showing when we move 
And this is a known technique to reduce the motion sickness of your player while moving, but if you want to leave it, we can simply uncheck the conform mode on the panel. Perfect, so as you can see, we have also settings as well for the speed of the movement with this slider. And for the speed of the turn, or the degree used to snap turn, with these two settings. There is also the draft things that, if we toggle, means that you can only move forward. Now, that's something I don't really like in my case, so I will reset it to the default position. And finally, we have here on the top right some settings to disable gravity or enable the players to fly. But in my case, I will remove the flying and enable the gravity to just simply stick to the ground. Finally, we have some settings as well for the grab move locomotion. And that's right, that's a new locomotion system that Unity has introduced with the 2.3 version and which allow you to grab the world to move yourself or even to grab with two hands and try to get them close to scale or unscale the world. It's used in some creation game, like Tilt Brush, for example, but in my case, I don't really like it too much, so I will keep it disabled. Now, I know that this knob slider and all of these interactable are really beautiful and really nice, but we'll talk about them later. And last, if you want to know how the tweaking of these settings works, let me quickly reduce the size of this window. This is all handled using this locomotion setup component that reference the locomotion manager on the VR rig and which will apply all of the change to the movement. So pretty straightforward, right? But now enough with the locomotion system. As you can see, there is more station to explore. So we can move around to go from one station to another or simply click here on start walkthrough. Now the first station is very simple. It shows you the three different types of XR grab interactable that you probably are familiar by now. It's instant, kinematic, and velocity tracked. Instant means no physics. Kinematics mean collision with only the other rigid body. And velocity tracked means collision with everybody. Now, one thing to note here is that the grabbing works both with direct interactor and ray interactor. Pretty cool. Now, let's click on the continue button and we should arrive at something we might already know as well, which is the activate interactable. So that means that you can grab an object with the grip button, but if you activate it with the trigger button, it can do stuff for you, like if you were to grab a gun and that you want to fire a bullet. Now, in this case, it simply changed the color of the object, as you can see. And by the way, if I reduce the window size and have a look at this game object, as you can see, the highlighting behavior when I interact with this object is driven with this hover state visual prefabs. Anyway, now let's maximize the windows again and continue to the next station. The next station is something also not very new. It's the socket interactor, which are kind of a zone that will automatically grab an object that you will place inside. And this is something super useful to make inventory or make sure that your player move things at a precise rotation. Now, if I continue, the next station is a bit useless. It just shows that you can indeed interact with UI with the ray, like we already did throughout this full tutorial. But if we continue one more time, now we have in front of us some 3D interactable that are super interesting. A lever, a joystick, a knob, a slider, and finally, a grip button and a push button. Now, as you can see, these work really, really great. I don't know why Unity does not add them by default to the XR Interaction Toolkit. But in my opinion, this is one of the cooler things from this demo project. And what's even cooler is that they work both with direct interaction and with the ray as well. Okay, finally, the last station is something already covered as well because it's some grab interactable using the velocity tracking that we saw in the first station. But we have also some physics joints on these game objects that are added to them, which is quite nice to show that you can still use this joint 
with the grab system. And that's something that we can use later to make some physical object like a drawer or a door. Now we have finished looking at all of these stations, but wait, there is more. Because for each station, we have some additional example in this scene. That's right. For example, for the basic grab system, we have here this watering can that knows when you move or when you tilt it down. And by the way, this is made using these two components, the on tilt and the on velocity component. Next, we have this hammer that can be used to break these piggy banks. But something strange is that in other Unity demo, you could grab these two objects with both ends and manipulate them. But if you want an example at two end manipulation, there is one in the additional example of the activate interactable. And as you can see here, I can grab this gun with both ends and shoot. Finally, we also have more example with the socket interactor that you know, and some UI prefab that can be reused to your own project, a claw machine that used two joysticks, and last but not least, some grab interactable using physics. And this is, I think, a great example of combining different features of the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. You have on one single door a XR socket that allows you to stick the key to the door, but then you have a XR knob to turn the key and the door handle, and finally, you can push the door open because it uses a physics grab interactable that has a inch joint, allowing this object to only move around a pivot. There is a lot to cover in this video, a bit more than I expected, but I hope it was not too boring for you guys. Now, this project really is an awesome way of learning how to use the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, so feel free to try it out with the GitHub link that you will find in the description below. Thank you for watching and shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work. See you soon, bye bye!